Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Kristen Cam, and today I will be talking about Telenam's OpenStreetMap editing experiences. Um, this is our agenda for today. I'll start off with an introduction of myself, the editing team at Telenav and our workflow. Then talk about how we identify errors in OpenStreetMap data with respect to routing and guidance, Telenav, and the tools we use. And then segue into a discussion on the types of cases we encountered with OpenStreetMap data and how we've engaged the community in correcting those errors. A little retrospective of our experiences thus far and some team acknowledgments and Q&A. And I would really ask you to withhold your questions until the end of the talk. And when you ask the questions, if you can be loud and clear, enunciate your words, because I'm hard of hearing. So again, my name is Kristen Cam. I'm an OpenStreetMap editor at Telenav. And our team is three people strong, including myself, Chris Zontain and Dami Ayaladi. We've been working at Telenav for the better part of the last 12 months, updating OpenStreetMap data for routing and guidance purposes. We've created nearly 20,000 chain sets in the data. It's amazing, amazing. All the errors that we've encountered and rectified. So we've done a lot of editing, a lot, a lot of editing. And through that editing, we've developed a workflow in terms of identifying the errors, figuring out how we're going to rectify them, engaging the community, and then finishing the errors. So this is the workflow. Telenab operates a mirror of the Planet OSM data and updates every five minutes. And through the mirror, this is a very generalized workflow, there's other things going on in the background well, we do two checks on the data. One is raw database checks, which I'll get into a little later, and the other one is with OpenStreetMap++, or what we call internally OSM++. And I'll talk about that in a moment. From there, we do some analysis on how people are tagging the data, how people are editing the geometries, and we develop a course of action. And then we ask ourselves, should we engage the community on the edit? Is it, it would be very controversial. If it is, we engage them, sort things out, and then commit the data to plan over some. So it's just continuous loop. So now I'll talk about error identification. My domain is not error identification, but I can give you a really short overview of how we identify errors. One is raw database checks. And as I said earlier, we are concerned about data that, or portions of the OSM data that affect routing and guidance. So for routing, or sorry, for guidance, we look at certain tags that would affect the routing, and also the guidance, of the name of the street, the cardinal direction, so on and so forth. The other method in identifying errors is with OSM++. And OSM++ was discussed last year at State of the Map by our very own Robert Stack. In a nutshell, OSM++ identifies line geometry errors and attribute errors within the data. And we process the data, and the data is analyzed by OSM++. Not only does OSM++ identify errors, but it produces spatial data that we use to locate the errors in the map and correct them. What spatial data we, is produced either, well, basically, basically it's a geojson file, and we open it in QGIS at the time being. And we edit the raw data in JOSM. It's a very nice Java editor that can be used on multiple platforms. All right, so error resolution, community engagement. The first thing that we talked about earlier in this conference was map roulette, which Mark Martin has been the spearheading. And we identify errors, OSM++, and they're pushed to map roulette, as Martin mentioned. The other tool that we use to engage the community in identifying and rectifying errors is with Battlegrid. And that too uses 
telenav algorithms to identify errors between tiger data, well, differences between the tiger data and the OSM data, and it flags the cell and a user of the web page and say, oh, okay, I can check to see what the data looks like compared to the aerial and say, yeah, there's an error, I can fix it, and realign the roads or add new roads. And the third way we engage community is discussions. We participate in numerous mailing lists that are within the OpenStreetMap sphere. Specific to this conference is the Talk, Talk US, and the Jossum development mailing lists. Okay. Now I'll talk about three different cases that many of you have probably read about in the Talk US mailing list. Uh, complex intersections, which we initially called braided roads, highway route relation, carnal directions, and Michigan lefts. So, as I said earlier, OpenStreetMap, oh, sorry, our data, nervous here, um, we identify errors when the OpenStreetMap data with OpenSM++. And complex intersections was identified. Uh, these intersections could, could have potential guidance errors. So this is a, what we used to call a braided road, but complex intersections. You can use the terms interchangeably. So if we had a routing engine, and we had a path that would go from this road, and it would make a right turn maneuver up this road, Based on the angle between these two ways, the instruction could say, take a hard right. And it's not really a hard right. So we're using OSM++ to identify the locations of these errors and correct the geometry. So when the guidance driven by, the guidance engine would say, calculate, the, sorry, uh, give you instructions on making a maneuver, it would be appropriate to what the ground truth is. So we were editing the data. This was one of the, one of the first big projects we worked on at Telenav. And there was one individual that noticed, this person resides in Ohio, that said, hey, um, you're editing these intersections that involve a transition between a single carriageway and a dual carriageway road. And I disagree with how you're making the edit. And this discussion escalated into the mailing list. So we're like, oh man, right? So there's this maybe two week talk US mailing list discussion on how to edit the data. And as some of you may know, like there's many different ways how people are editing the data and sometimes it's really hard to come up with some kind of conclusion. So we participated in that. We showed before and after examples on how to edit these intersections and we came up with a conclusion on how to edit them. Um, and so in this case here, we, sorry, I'm a little nervous here. We needed 86, 87% of the cases that we identified within the OSM++ errors with the complex uh, intersections. And then this is basically the outcome of the data editing. So cardinal direction analysis. Um, one of the things that we found when we were QAing the data was that we didn't have correct cardinal direction information in terms of guiding a user from an on-ramp to go on a, say, northbound or southbound portion of the highway. And we realized we needed to incorporate this in our guidance. This is an example here. So this is an example in Sunnyvale, California. It is an intersection between Highway 101 North, South, and Matilda Avenue. And as you can see, the highlighted ways here, they're both right turn maneuvers that will get you onto Highway 101. If you're a person that's unfamiliar with the area, you, you're being instructed, oh, I need to make a right turn on Highway 101. Do you need to go on Highway 101 North or Highway 101 South? 
So it's very important to have this information and the data and the parse information provided to our customers at some point in time. So we needed to take a look at the distribution of the data and how the data is being tagged. And we identified two different methods in updating the cardinal directions. And one method would be to update the member rules of the highway route relations, or two, add a direction tag to the highway route relation. So different methods. And this is what, the, what we found in our analysis. And the majority of the methods, the majority of the relations that we looked at were tagged with the member rule value of north, south, east, west. And that's what the blue edges in this map represent. And the red edges in the map represent highway route relations that are tagged with a direction tag. So we needed to see where there are gaps in the data. And we realized that nearly 1,700 relations within the United States did not have cardinal direction information. So we established one, how people are tagging the data. So it was just convention. And then two, we identified where the gaps in data were. So we needed to go ahead and update the data. We realized from the previous experience that we can, something like this might be a little controversial. So we decided to engage the community in updating the data. And so this is just a, an example of updating the member rules of the highway route relation. This is forward, so one of the conventions used to tag highway route relation members. And the cardinal direction, it's pretty small, but it says east in the rule. So these ways that are members of this I-35 highway route relation represent eastbound I-35. So learning from our past experience, we're like, we need to engage the community, and we did that in a multiple, multiple ways. One was sending a message to the OpenStreetMap mailing list saying, hey, we want to update the cardinal direction information. This is the observed methods that we've made, and this is our plan of attack. The second way was updating the OSM wiki with our observations and the particular convention that is preferred in updating the data. So it's conversation. And then this is the wiki, as some of you may know. Here's little chuckles here and there. So nearly 90% of the highway route relations that we identified of lacking cardinal directions were updated by our group. And then we also augmented our internal processing of OSM data to, proce to process the cardinal directions. And then the routing, system, routing engine also was accommodated to handle cardinal directions. Right. So it's the last case, less controversial than the first two, but it's about Michigan lefts. And Michigan lefts is a type of maneuver, specifically endemic in the state of Michigan, that prevents a traditional left turn at an intersection. So instead of one maneuver, which is, I'm going to make a left from this street to that street, this street from that street, and so on and so forth, you need two maneuvers. Either you're making a right turn and a U turn, or then you're making a U turn and then a right turn. A little, little, little funky, but there are positives in this type of roadway configuration because it facilitates through traffic. So we knew that what this type of a traffic flow was, but we wanted to identify where these types of road configurations were in the data. And we used OSM++ to identify the turns and maneuvers. And I did not mention this earlier, but OSM++ not only can find line, geometry, and attribute errors based on the data alone, but we also use our GPS probe data in assisting us in identifying errors. So it's going to have an example here. So we have a geodesic output overlaid on an aerial, and we can identify like the different maneuvers that are associated with the Michigan left. And with that, we updated the data. 
boxes. Turn restrictions, preventing that left turn, so routing engines no. And we also created a wiki page based on you know, previous experiences, things need to be documented. And this is just a summary of our work. So we looked at the data. We found that there were potential cases within five states. Of these five states, we found that maybe two states had legitimate cases. Of these cases, we updated maybe 50% of them. And other portions of the cases were updated by our fellow OpenStreetMap editor. So other folks are vigilant in the data, too. So retrospective, um, there's, a, there's a couple of refrains here. Number one is that people within the OpenStreetMap community are pretty vigilant. I mean, myself, Chris Zontine, and other members of our project have received messages from people saying, hey, like, thanks for editing. Good job. We really appreciate it. You have like a thousand edits. That's amazing. Keep it up. And there are other people, like the individual I mentioned earlier, who said, hey, I have a problem with your data edits. I disagree with it. And it, it, it's fine. So what I'm trying to say is that it's, it's, it's pretty cool that people are visual in the data and that they're updating it. And we're not the only ones that are concerned about the data, not only just in routing guidance, but just pure cartographic perspective. The other thing that we found through our experiences is documentation. And a lot of the documentation is in the wiki. As someone that, I know, as someone that is you know, more computer refined, that can like parse through the wiki, it's, it's easy for me to find things. But there are gaps. There are certain so geometries that are not documented within OSM. So you have to look at the data. I mean, I, I can get patterns, but then I get patterns and I do something, and I get some feedback, and it's like, whoa, what am I supposed to do? Um, there's different things on uh, different road configurations. They're not just Michigan lefts. There's single point urban interchanges. There are double diamond interchanges. And how are we supposed to represent that in OpenStreetMap and communicate that to others? So it would be really nice for complex geometries to be documented in open stream. You can't just keep on doing things on an ad hoc basis. Things would be nice to be proactive, understand what we are trying to represent. And then two, there's a lot of talk about, yeah, we want to have more and more people use OpenStreetMap, but the wiki page, sometimes we feel is kind of hard to access for the layperson. It would be really nice if there was kind of a centralized document, easy to navigate and access, where someone can say, hey, I want to learn how to digitize this type of interchange or digitize a certain type of intersection. How can I do it? You have like a visual example before and after, super simple. So it's really, really, really nice to have that. And the third thing that would be nice is to have local local tagging practices. Our tagging is based on you know European, British uh, conception of like highway classifications, uh, PUI, so on and so forth. So it'd be kind of nice if we had something local to, in our case, the U.S. And if you know there's people in other countries that are tagging the data, it'd be nice if they had that ability to like have conventions labeling endemic to their location. So that's pretty much it for my discussion. I'd like to give some acknowledgments to our team. There are a number of us here at Teladab and like everyone to stand up if you're in attendance. Uh, Robert Stack, Tony Ma, Mathieu Nahum, they work on traffic in OSM++ and our very own Martin Van Exel. So if you have any information if you have any questions, information, you can contact us through our OSM IDs or email addresses. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's all there. It's all there. And I have to do this little plug here because it's a corporate thing. So if you're interested in winning a prize to go to the state of the map, EU, scout me, dot OSM, you might win like a piece of luggage. I mean, I don't know. That'd be pretty awesome. <laughs> That'd be pretty awesome. Uh, so, anyone has any questions? 
questions? Yeah. You mentioned OSM plus plus and said you were going to go into depth with it. OSM plus plus. Yes. Can you just quickly talk about are those tools that Telenet has made that are QA kind of tools or? not the right person to talk about OSM++. That's, as I said earlier, it's not my domain. Um, there is an individual here that is, works on OSM++. You can raise your hand. It's Tony Ma. So I would suggest that if you have questions on OSM++, talk to Tony. Um, he will answer your questions. Do you, uh, with Telenav, do you evaluate cross-evaluate OSM data and te Telenav's proprietary data? Telenav to... Tel doesn't have proprietary data. That, that, uh, it's a representation of roadway networks. Um, as I said earlier, we do use our GPS probe data okay. with our analytical tools to identify errors. Okay. Yeah. So that was touched upon last year with OSM++ talk. Um, Robert Stack. Uh, any other questions? That was a general question. You talked about the interaction with the OpenStreetMap community. Sure. Repeat we'll that again. You, you had discussed the, your interaction with the OpenStreetMap community and you know people disagreeing and coming, you know, figuring all that out. I was wondering, you know, generally, uh, you know, with businesses, you generally work with other businesses, and, and the relationships are very formal and business-like, but also sometimes also expensive because if you want someone else to do work, you have to pay them. I'm just curious, like, what are your thoughts overall? on working with an open source community where things are kind of more cowboy style, but also you know, free. Cumbersome free. It's a very long. Does, does that make sense? Does that make sense? Like, like, like well, just how do you feel about working with an open source community versus uh, a traditional business working with another business? Also, so your question is, how do we feel or how do I feel about working with the open source community as opposed to working with like a business to business interaction for this type of? Like, like, I mean, with my business, we do a lot of business interaction with other groups, and you know, there's a, a specific feel to that, I guess. You know, sometimes you it's frustrating, sometimes it's positive, but uh, you know, when you're working, when, when, when you say, hey, we need to standardize this, and then half the work is done for you for free, I and mean, that obviously has to be pretty cool that 50% of the work you want it done, you've done by it. But, but at the same time, there's, uh, there's seems to be drawbacks. Um, I don't know if I'm totally understanding the question. Okay. I mean, it's a little, it's a little loaded. Yes, it's really loaded. Um, so, uh, to, to rephrase this a little bit, how do you feel about the mailing list? Like, do you think there could be other mechanisms of communication uh, that would be better, or do you think it's pretty good as it stands? Other, other, okay. So, is this this question about accessibility? Yeah. Okay. Um, how are we on time? <laughs> no, 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 no worries, no worries. Um, I, I had this discussion with a fellow. OSM community member about accessibility and OpenStreetMap, um, getting new users into editing the data and understanding like, how they're supposed to edit the data. And I'm just going to say this, because it's universal. I think about a newspaper publication like Los Angeles Times, San Francisco Chronicle, Chicago Tribune, et cetera, et cetera. They are mass market. They're trying to reach a lot of people. And how do they do that? It's like how they're writing, the grammar, uh, vocabulary, blah, blah, blah. It's like fifth grade level, really. So I think what I would say is that if you're trying to make things more accessible, communicating things on the mailing list or the bulletin boards, the question is like, if we're going to have this communication vector, is it going to be accessible to like what? You can say like fifth graders? Or we can say like maybe people in high school or college, but they, that's I think that's the question that should be answered, not like oh we should use a mailing list or a particular type of device. And I think if you can answer that question, then you can figure out like what you need to implement to reach out to a broader community. Yeah, cool. Um, 
So I think that's pretty much it. Everyone's filing in here. If you have any questions, you can email me or you can pull me aside after the talk and I will be more than welcome to answer your questions. Thank you.